Ten years ago, if you went to the grocery store or a vitamin store and looked at melatonin on the shelf, it's not exactly something that you would even have any correlation with longevity or aging or anything like that, right? Well, the research is starting to get interesting because what we're seeing now in the research is that melatonin declines as we age. This might answer some of our sleep questions as to maybe why we don't sleep as well when we get older, but it also opens up Pandora's box with a bunch of other research. So let's go ahead and dive in because it's very interesting stuff. After today's video, you can save 25% off your entire grocery order if you want to check out Thrive Market. If you're new to this channel, you probably haven't heard me talk about them, but if you're a veteran, you know I've been talking about them for years. They are where I do almost all of my grocery shopping nowadays, especially when it comes down to non-perishable items. But Thrive Market is super cool because they also have sustainable meat and seafood options as well, so it's not just non-perishables. And everything gets delivered to your doorstep in just a couple of days, and their prices are super, super competitive. In fact, you can use their barcode scanner when you go to like Whole Foods to actually see if you could get an item cheaper through Thrive Market. Not to mention the variety of foods that they have is better than almost every single grocery store that I have been to. But the convenience factor, that's the big one. Not to mention you can save 25% off your entire grocery order by using that link down below. Plus you get a free gift. So check out Thrive Market after this video. So it's interesting that we've seen that melatonin decreases as we get older, but we're also starting to see that melatonin levels seem to be a little bit lower, sometimes a lot lower, in people with metabolic issues like type 2 diabetes. So what's going on there? Is there some link with other things? Well, there was a study that was published in the journal Progress in Neurobiology. Very interesting because it took a look at just this. What this study demonstrated is that melatonin may actually attenuate what is called brain inflammaging and systemic inflammaging. What the heck is inflammaging? Inflammaging is the inflammatory response or the inflammation that is associated with getting older. As we get older, it's fairly common knowledge that we have a larger inflammatory response. We have sort of low-grade inflammation that's happening almost all the time. Now what ends up happening in this particular case, as the journal Cell Reports had noted, is that DNA leakage from damaged cells plays a very strong potential role in the chronic inflammation as we get older. Now that was a rodent model study, but the bottom line is that this DNA leakage and this overall like damage that is released from damaged cells or these particles that are released from damaged cells, they trigger in a simple inflammatory immune response to deal with them. Now, where does melatonin come into play? Now, melatonin, believe it or not, actually has antioxidant properties. Okay, it can support mitochondrial respiration. It can support to make our mitochondria stronger. And it's sort of this rite of passage. It's like if you live this lifestyle where you are doing things that support melatonin production, hey, guess what? Not only do you sleep better, but you also get the benefits of your body producing melatonin. So I encourage you to stop thinking about melatonin uh, like getting it in a supplement form for a minute, okay? I don't want to think that. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. I don't even want to talk about using it in an exogenous way to aid in this because A, that's not what this channel is about. B, I feel like you could get in trouble for talking about it in that category as a supplement. Let's talk about how you induce or improve your own melatonin levels to get this benefit because melatonin is seeming to improve the mitochondria so that the mitochondria are stronger and don't release as much of these damaged particles. I don't know if it's 100% getting all the way through because it's hard to explain, but essentially if our mitochondria are stronger, we don't have as much of this inflammatory response, meaning that low-grade chronic inflammation that is inflammaging, the inflammation associated with getting older, isn't as big of a problem, meaning maybe, just maybe, we can have a better quality of life. I'm not super old, but I'm getting older and I feel every day, I truly do. So I pay attention to this. Some of the ways that you can improve your melatonin naturally are going to simply be by getting yourself on a normal eating pattern the same time every day. Now, this doesn't have to be every single, single day, but these circadian rhythms and these diurnal clocks are just beyond pivotal, so important, especially the last meal of the day. 
trying to cease your eating at a specific time earlier, like two, three hours before bed if possible, but continually having that meal fall at roughly the same time every day is very, very important because that can stimulate the body to produce more melatonin. Not only that, it's gonna help with the blood sugar spikes that might help you sleep better too. Getting enough sunlight during the day is also super important. Think of it as contrast, okay? You need to have enough sun exposure so that when you are inside, the body really recognizes that contrast. Oh, lots of bright light, oh, now it's darker, let's go ahead and start increasing melatonin levels so that this person gets ready for sleep, right? Another thing that you want to be paying attention to is, of course, avoiding blue light before bed. This sounds so cheeky because there's so many blue light gimmicky products out there, but it's pretty simple. Don't have your face in your phone. Try to reduce the incandescent and fluorescent lights in your house a little bit at night so that you're not bombarding yourself with these different rays so that your body actually has a chance to upregulate things. Now, additionally, Getting the sun is going to help you out with the vitamin D, and there is some access with vitamin D and melatonin in this whole process. But also remember that anything that you do to support melatonin production also is supporting serotonin, because serotonin is a precursor to melatonin. And serotonin has potential neuroinflammation modulating properties, so it can affect the inflammation that's in our brain which may be why in this particular study that was published in Frontiers in Immunology that I referenced, why there was a reduction in the brain inflammation. Maybe it came along with the serotonin that was the precursor to melatonin. So we need to stop negating the effects of melatonin. Stop thinking of it as just the sleep hormone or the sleep neurotransmitter, whatever you wanna think about, okay? Because it has a much bigger role. And it's sort of an aha moment when you start thinking of it differently and realize that it's not just single purpose, not just dual purpose, but very, very much so multi-purpose. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.